Hey everyone, what's going on? Today I am bringing you another Ashrams Call build guide, and today I'm going to talk about my character, Nomadge. And as you can guess by the name, this character has no magic, which makes it quite difficult to play sometimes. Really hard to find the proper gear, but super fun and really cool character just to kind of mess around with. You may have seen him in some of my other videos, like doing Rinth and Tentacle Weapons. So let's jump right into what my build is. So I am 100 strength, 60 endurance, 100 cord, 100 quickness, no points in focus or self because again, we have no magic. So that's what this ends up looking like. And for my skills, I am specialized alchemy so that I can imperil and vol monster still, even though it's only level sevens, it still typically gets the job done. Spec dirty fighting, spec healing, heavy weapons, melee defense, and missile weapons. I really like being a hybrid melee missile character. It gives you a ton of options, and it's just really nice to have that ranged ability. Now for my train skills, arcane lore like everybody else, deception, lockpick, missile D, because I can. I have a ton of skill credits to work with since I don't have any magic skills. Recklessness, shield, and sneak attack. And now I do have three skill credits left over. I don't think that I have done the limited skill credits. So there is some ability here to potentially get another skill like cooking. I think that's the only thing that I would get. Maybe leadership just for the extra health from the uh, Platinum Horn of Leadership. Now in terms of the gear that I'm using, I am lucky enough to have two pieces of gauntlet jewelry which make your life so much easier when you're doing a no magic character. So the uh, Yellow Society Locket has a uh, double legendary piercing and slash ward, and then it has four legend. Uh, sorry, it has four level eight protections: piercing, blade, bludgeoning, and armor. And then on top of that, it has warrior's vitality, uh, two damage rating, uh, two damage reduction rating, and heal boost two, which is just incredible. And then the Green Society Ring, which gives me my level 8 heavy weapons and missile buffs and my legendary heavy weapon and missile buffs on top of giving me legendary stamina gain warriors vigor and uh this one because the gauntlet damage ratings don't stack uh this one only actually gives me critical damage rating too which is still incredible now if i had my way i would have a third piece of gauntlet jewelry i would have the purple society band because that gives a lot of creature level eight buffs and it gives you legendary invuln impreg and uh magic resistance which is super nice um, so that's something that i'm going to be trying to add to this character in the future for the rest of my gear i have a uh decent legendary bludgeoning ward trinket which also has um fire protection uh, seven and some majors which are not super relevant i'm just using the bracelet of storms which is uh from one of the althoe hive pincer hive eviscerator pincer quest i think it's one of the high level althoe pincer quests it has uh lightning protection eight and legendary storm ward which is very nice so basically what i'm trying to get done with my jewelry and my clothing is get all of the level eight life protections because those are super important so this ring that i have is acid protection and legendary acid ward and um legendary heavy weapons bracelet with uh, aura of resistance and assess person buff super important and for my shirt i have legendary flame ward fire protection eight and uh, pants legendary frost ward uh cold protection eight which it's actually super convenient that i found a bunch of jewelry that has both the level eight Prote and the same legendary protection so that's kind of cool i just have a level four heavy weapons cloak right now it would be nice to get a level five with um some rating but this does have the minus 200 percent or minus 200 damage proc on it for my armor i am using the reinforced shogen shozoku set so this is something that you can get from running hoshino fortress infiltration and you get one piece of this or the o Uroi armor set each time you run the quest. And the reason I'm using this is because each piece fully banes itself. It has all the level 8 banes, so I don't have to worry about that. Again, I don't have item magic, so pieces of armor that don't bane. I would have to find a full covenant suit, which is something that I'd like to work on in the future. But I can't really use regular armor that doesn't have banes on it. 
Now, on top of that, this set has some cool stuff. Each piece has an imbue, plus one magic D, uh, plus one missile D, plus one magic D, plus one melee D, and plus one melee D. So that's that's kind of a cool little bonus. It also has all the level eight creature attribute buffs, except for focus, which focus for me is not super important. Obviously, it affects like my magic defense, but it's not a huge issue. And there are some epics that you get from this like epic missile weapons which obviously i have uh that replaced by the green ring but there are some decent epics in this uh that i find useful the main reason i'm using it though is because it fully banes itself now as for how i get around as a character who doesn't have item magic i use portal gems basically to get everywhere and there are some really cool portal gems for getting places that you might not normally think of. So for instance, I like to, whenever people are giving them away or whenever I can find them from gambling, get Dancha Keys, Gems of Portal Recall. So I do have a way to Portal Recall if I die in a hard to get to place. Obviously Town Network Portal Gems, there's Sanctuary Portal Gems, and there are some Portal Gems that you get from Black Marrow Reliquaries. For instance, I don't know if I have any on me, but there are things like Black Glass Array, which take you directly to the Obsidian Plains. There's also the Mansion Portal devices that I use to get around, and of course my Portal Mules, which are super useful. But it's really not that hard to get around without item magic. Some of the things that are a little annoying is like getting to the Graveyard, because I don't have Graveyard Recall. Getting to Althoi North, because I can't get Althoi North Recall. There's things like that. That can be a little bit frustrating, but in the grand scheme of things, um, it's not that big of a deal, and it's kind of cool to play without item magic. Now, in terms of my weapons, the way that I get around needing to find weapons that have all the buffs on them is through luminance. So you can buy with luminance uh, pearls of uh, Blood Drinker, Defender, and Heart Seeker. You can't buy Swift Killer. But I do have 100 quickness, so I don't think that that's really an issue. And I could always try to find weapons that have, like, a swift killer of any level on it. Really, it could be, like, swift killer 4, and it would probably get the speed of the weapon down low enough to not be an issue. Um, so luminance is really the way that I get my item buffs for my weapons, that is. And yeah, that's Nomadge in a nutshell. Uh, very cool character. I enjoy playing him quite a bit. It's nice... Uh, not having to buff like i just log in i'm like oh i don't have to check my buffs i'm just like oh i'm buffed i find that i find that pretty cool yeah it's fun to build a suit with uh with the idea of not having to buff in mind and i'm still working on it but this is where he is now hope you enjoyed the video if you did please press that like button please subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching